Okay, so back in your Solution Explorer, let's add a folder just to get some stuff out of the way. Call the folder default and we'll drag these into that folder. That way those are kind of out of the way. So now we'll right click on here, add a new folder. We'll call it map related stuff. Right click on it, add class. For certain texture maps, we're gonna to wanna to know where the rectangles are located on it. So we'll create a class called Sheet. It'll keep track of all the relevant information related to tiles. We'll also make a tile class. So we'll add class tile. Let's go back to the Sheet class for a second. So we'll need to know what type it is. We'll just make something called Tile Type. Before we continue, though, let's make a tile type. Go back into Tile. Okay, so above the Tile class, let's add an enumerator for tile types. So we could have empty, a solid, reflector for crystals. We're also going to need spring platforms, regular platforms, spikes. Most of the things will be solid or empty, meaning that you can walk past them. Okay, we'll go back into sheet again and define what the sheet is. Now technically, a sheet isn't actually the sprite sheet. It's just a part on the sheet. I'm just saying sheet for short. Uh, we'll need the rectangle. Like if you wanted, you could call this sheet part. We're just going to call it sheet though. Got to resolve this one. We need to know how many tiles wide and how many tiles high the part is. So if it's a really big image, it might occupy multiple tiles. Maybe not all the tiles will be solid or not all the tiles will be considered occupied. So these would only represent how many tiles wide and how many tiles high from the corner of where it's applied. How many tiles wide and how many tiles high are considered occupied and you can offset the image itself from the corner of the tile where the tile group is applied. So we'll set up a constructor for it too. So it'll be the top left hand corner and the bottom right hand corner. We also need to know the type. We need to know how many tiles wide it's supposed to be and how many high. And we'll know the location of the top left corner of the tile. Calculate the width, the right hand side minus the left hand side plus one. And now we can create the rectangle. The rectangle of the image will be x, y, width, height. Type is just type, tiles wide is just tiles wide. Tiles high, the offset, the new vector to y. The top left corner of where the image starts minus the top left corner that is supposed to be the corner where the occupied tile starts. So what that means is this is the, the top left corner where the tile starts and the offset is the distance this way and this way to the corner of the source rectangle of the image. Only this tile is going to be occupied even though it's technically taking up the space of at least four tiles. And we're just going to set it by one by one because the character is only going to interact with this 64 by 64 section. For a tile like this, this would be occupied, this would be occupied, this one and this one. So that would be considered two tiles wide, two tiles high. And over here you can see this is three wide, three high. For something like this that's in the background, I might say that the tile it occupies is here and this is the corner. And then the offset would be way over here and the rectangle would occupy this much space. The reason why I'd only make it occupy one tile and call it empty is because if I wanted to add stuff in front of it or around it or whatever, if the tile is occupied, then I can put any extra stuff, any extra decorations on it. So I just have it occupy one tile. Whereas for something solid, you'd want it to know that all those tiles are occupied. So you'd say this is two tiles wide, two tiles high. Property is solid. For example, here, this one would be four tiles wide, one tile high. The corner might be here. You want the grass to overlap the feet a bit. So the offset would be up here and the rectangle, the bounding rectangle would be all of this. So that's all there is to the sheet class. Just for convenience, let's add a sheet manager in the same file. This isn't normally recommended, but since the sheet class is so small and I don't want to have a whole bunch of stuff over here, I try to keep the number of classes I need down. Anything sheet related will put in this sheet file. So these are sheet parts and this is the sheet manager that sets up the coordinates for all the different sheet parts. So let's start with number of sheet parts. That'll automatically be zero to begin with because this is C-sharp, but we'll set it to zero here anyway in the constructor. We'll set up sheet for level one. 
So this right here is just referring to a list of sheets that we'll have in game one. In fact, we can add that now. So we'll go into game one and let's add another section of variables here. So we'll have a constant integer for how many sheet parts we can have. We'll allocate memory for that and we'll make some sheet parts. We'll also want a sheet manager. Go back into sheet, remove this dot map related stuff, same in tile. So we'll go to initialize first. And under input, we'll put our map initialization stuff here. So we'll allocate some memory for, for our sheet parts. We'll set up the sheet manager. We'll go back into sheet, scroll down to sheet manager. We'll say number of sheet parts equals zero to begin with. It's possible you may be reloading level one information or one of the other levels. So you always want to reset the number of sheet parts when you're starting it. I'm going to use end count and then assign sheet parts to n afterwards because it's a lot less to look at. So sheet n, new sheet, we'll say 0, 0, 1, 1, top type empty, uh, 1, 1, top left is 0. And that's if it's nothing. Now, we'll do grass one first. Going back into your paint program, turn your grid lines on. I hit control quote, zoom in. And you'll need some sort of window that'll show you information about where you are on the image. So I'm using the info window. And I'd like the tile to start here, the solid tile. And I want it to be about four wide for this piece. So first though, I'll get the, the bounding rectangle image. We could start it at zero, zero, or better, we could start it at zero, 16, because it doesn't look like it goes any higher than 16. And it looks like it ends at about 255, 111. So that's kind of the bounding rectangle. It's 256 wide. It'll calculate the width and height of the rectangle on its own though. It just needs the top left corner and the bottom right corner. Okay, so 0, 16 is the top left hand corner. 255, 111 was the bottom right hand corner. It's a solid type. It's four tiles wide will be occupied and one tile high of, of occupation. Horizontal offset is B0. And how do we want to position this relative to where the tile corner is? It's going to be determined by the where the corner would be. So we'll say 0 this is the first coordinate of the corner. Second coordinate of the corner where it starts to become solid would be about 32. So it would be around here. We'll say, based on what we got here, that the y would be 32, x would be 0. And that would be the corner right here. And we'll just assume that these tiles, these four wide, one high, are going to be solid now. So then this would be 32f. We'll call it grass. It's number 1. And when we're using the editor, we're going to use the letter Q to put down that one. We're going to work our way across the keyboard. Ideally, what you'd do is have a menu that you can pull up that would show the tile map, and you'd just be able to pick which one you want off of it. The next part we'll do will be the solid green one here. It's too wide, too high, because all of these are going to be solid. Top left corner is 0, 128. Bottom right corner, 127, 255. So we should have all the information we need to create that block now. So it was 0, 128 is the top left corner. 127, 255 was the bottom right hand corner. Tile type is solid. It's a 2 by 2. Top left hand corner is the exact same as where the image starts, so 0f, 128f. It's a solid block, green one, second one, and we'll use key W. So when you press W, it'll put that one down. Let's see what the next one should be. Let's do the spring leaves next. So it'll be about this region here. So the bounding box should start around 166. If you go around here, 166 would be the left side, and then the top would be around 128. Right hand side looks about 344. Bottom one, about 255. And the top left corner of this sort of section here, where it's you can actually jump off of it, we're going to give this this tile type spring. Top left corner would be around uh, about 224, 160. Drag that out, 64 by 64. That's kind of the region right there that you'll be able to bounce off of. So let's put those entries in. So there's 166. 128, I think 344, yep, 255, tile type, spring this time, and it's a one by one, the corner is a 224, 160, we don't have to put the F's here, they just signify that that's floating point, we could just leave it like this if we wanted, so this is the spring, in this case it's leaves, and we'll use key, 
Okay, so next, space and drag. Let's go over to the crystals here. Say we start around 455, somewhere in here. And I guess we could start right at the top in case we want to extend this. 128, right hand side, about 575. Bottom, about 254. Top left corner of occupation, let's say about 480, maybe about up here. And then 64 by 64. So it kind of gets buried into the ground a little bit when you put it down. And this will be considered a reflector, starting the sheet part. 575, 254, tile type, reflector. And anything reflector is going to have that crystal effect applied to it. It's a one by one. The corner it occupies is 40, 160. This one, reflective crystals. Fourth index, next key, the R. Looking our way across the keyboard. I'm going to fast forward a bit, fill these all in, just a second. So fast forward, I filled all the different sheet part entries in, and you can see it progresses through the letters on the keyboard. We we'll also need to remember that number of sheet parts is now equal to n. Let's go back to tile. So usually within the same class I put my tiles, or my tile types, I usually make a, like, a little tiny class called start data. All it does is hold where the player starts on the map and maybe other player related information the player should start with. Let's make a quick little constructor for this. So we'll start at, that's all there is to it, and then it stores that out with the map. Don't forget the curly bracket up here. So then let's start our tile class. So each tile is going to need an index which sheet part that particular tile is associated with. That's how you determine what image to use, the sheet of whatever index. We'll also store the tile type in here, not just in sheet, for easier access. This way, if you wanted, you could change the tile's type. If by default it's supposed to be solid, but you want it to be like a wall that you can walk through or something, you could change it to empty after you hit a switch. Or if you wanted it to become a spring, having the tile type right in the tile itself uh, makes it handy so you can adjust the properties for that specific tile rather than referring to the sheet because you might not want the default type. You should be able to scale it. I'll have to resolve this. Resolve. 